I'm here on a nice sunny day in Santa Monica, California, and I started wondering about light and what it's made of. Is it a particle? Is it a wave? Light is one of those things that most people don't seem to fully understand. If you were to zoom in on a ray of light, what would you see? It might help to begin with this. Light is a form of radiation. We all know that too much sunlight can trigger skin cancer. We also know that radiation exposure can raise the risk of developing some forms of cancer, so it's not hard to put the two together. But not all forms of radiation are the same. Photons are subatomic particles that carry electromagnetic radiation and force. When electrons become excited, they can emit a pack of light or a photon. Biophotons are photons of light in the ultraviolet and low visible light range that are produced by a biological system. Although photons are most often associated with light, they do exist in all matter, including human cells. As you walk around, you're constantly emitting low levels of these light particles, although they're invisible to the naked eye. How bioluminescent you are might just say something about your health. The photons in animals, plant matter, and human cells are referred to as ultra-weak photons. And scientists have been researching biophoton emissions since the 1960s and their connection to metabolism and disease. Biophotons may be detected with photomultipliers or by means of an ultra-low noise CCD camera to produce an image, using an exposure time of typically 15 minutes for plant material. Inside is very dark when I close the door, and the plant has stored the light from outside. And if I um, put on the device, then you can see the light which is now emitted from the plant on the screen. Nothing connected to the plant? Nothing connected to the plant, it's just the plant itself. The light, what the plant has stored from outside, and it's now emitting the light. And you see, the intensity is now decreasing, it's going down. And we watch that increasing intensity, and with other um, devices, we have a better solution of the intensity. Here you see the plant is not here, and you also see the flickering of the photons. That's from the background. With other devices, we have a better background solution. Um, and now you don't see much more here. And we have the um, possibility to illuminate the plant again. I will do that now. Now we are illuminating it. And if I now switch on, the plant has also stored the light. But it doesn't have anything to do with chlorophyll, right? No, it uh, doesn't have to do with that. That's the biophotons. Every biological and non-biological system can store a bit of light. If you wait it long enough, it's, there will be still light? Yes, yes. So the light is always there. And you can detect it? We can detect it. We have some photomultipliers that are much more sensitive than this camera because this plant is emitting much of light. Fritz Albert Popp is a German researcher in biophysics, particularly in the study of biophotons. He has been quoted as saying that we know today that man essentially is a being of light. We are still on the threshold of fully understanding the complex relationship between light and life, but we can now say empathetically that the function of our entire metabolism is dependent on light. Born in 1938 in Frankfurt, Germany, his research confirms the existence of biophotons defined as particles of light with no mass that transmit information within and between cells. His work shows that DNA in a living cell 
stores and releases photons, creating biophotonic emissions that may hold the key to illness and health. Professor Pop, founder of the International Institute of Biophysics, explains to us what a biophoton is and its crucial role in cellular communication. Maybe we should explain a little bit what photon is because uh, it's yeah. an ele elementary particle of light, yeah. right? Yeah. So when yeah. you say that there are only a yeah. few photons, it's a very, very low intensity of light. Very low intensity. It corresponds to a candle at a distance of about 20 kilometers. So they are really single units of an electromagnetic field. Photons are events, are processes where energy is taken up by the multiplier or by a detector from an external electromagnetic field. Can you please share with us what they actually are, how do they work and where are they coming from? The biophotons are photons coming out from living systems. Therefore, we say not bioluminescence, but we say biophotons because they are so weak that you can count single photons. And the best is to tell you at an example what they do and why they are important. We have in every cell, we have about 100,000 chemical reactions per second. If I say 21, 22, in every of your cells there happened 10, 100,000 chemical reactions. And nobody can tell you who is uh, responsible for that chemical reaction takes place just at the right time and at, on the right position. And if I tell you there are photons which are responsible for that, because a chemical reaction can only happen if the molecule which is reacting is excited by a photon. So the photon is necessary to stimulate a molecule to a chemical reactions. So any, any alive tissue, any alive cells produce photons, produces light. We are swimming in an ocean of light. It is very impossible to uh, get a complete darkness. You have always photons. Some people say it's not surprising that in the cells you have also photons. But it is surprising because of the following. Not the intensity of the photons are important, but they have a very high degree of coherence. Coherence is an important aspect of biophotons. It refers to the ability of a wave, and light comes as waves, to exhibit what is known as interference. Interference, when it refers to light waves, means that two or more waves can be added to result in a new wave pattern. I would say they have a very high degree of order, extremely high degree of order. This was shown not long ago by a, a group of chemists at the Berkeley, in Berkeley in California. They showed that by photosynthesis, where the photo, photons are used for getting energy, the coherence extremely high. So coherence means that the photons can be superposed, that the uh, message which is submitted by the photons gets very, very clear. For instance, when we speak together, it may be the lower the noise is, the more silent we are, the better we understand each other. So actually this may, is probably a very important because why biophotons actually are so special if they are everywhere? Uh, for example, uh, what uh, does distinct them from a heat, uh, which is also electromagnetic radiation and can be radiated from all living organisms? Yes, heat is uh, the waste of electromagnetic fields. But photons, biophotons, are very distinct signals. Heat has a very low degree of coherence. Noise. But if these photons have a de high degree of coherence, they can work as submitters of information. The lower the noise is, the lower the intensity is, the better is the chance that you can 
submits the information with, with a very high efficiency. For instance, not long ago, American physicists and chemists showed that during the photosynthesis, the photons which are coming from the sun are taken up with an extraordinary high degree of coherence, which allows them that only a few percent are transmitted into heat. They have a very high efficiency. And the same happens when you transmit information. You have to have a very high efficiency in order to have a clean understanding of what happens. So let's get into it more deeply. Actually, um, how can biophotons send encoded message or, or, or that information communicating between biological cells? And uh, has this message to be delivered really with photons, with speed of light? Yes. Uh, but uh, as I told, the biological system has a much higher capacity of doing that, that we can do it technically. For instance, the coherence time of the best laser is about a tenth of a second. But the coherence time of biological system is at least in the order of days or even weeks. Amazing. So you have a very, very high degree of coherence, and this allow the biological system to communicate with the highest possible clearness which is able. So for instance, these 100,000 reactions which happen in one cell per second, they are controlled, they are regulated by photons. And then it has to be very, uh, very accurate at what time and what place is a photon uh, transmitted. And the information which we call about is uh, created by the field, by the electromagnetic field behind. And this field uh, uh, is able to produce a pattern. And always, if you have a spatial dynamical pattern, so it's not only a pattern in the, in the locality, it is also a pattern in the time. This spatial dynamical pattern provides the information of a cell and it tells a cell what it has to do at what time and what place. So basically the predictability of the pattern and the stability of the pattern is the signature of coherence. of the, exactly. And uh, this 20 few thousand of reaction requires speed of light? Yes, it is important. For instance, such a reactance, reaction happens in the following way. The molecule takes up the photon. This takes a nanosecond. And after this nanosecond, the photon is not thermalized. It, is not, it doesn't produce heat. It is not transferred into heat. But it is given back to the field and is available for the next reaction. So you, you, you don't need 100,000 photons in order to trigger these reactions. With one photon, one which is, you, you, you can, you can trigger hundred, hundred thousand, or it's an autocatalytical messenger for the reactions which happen. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist, producer, and author. Please have a look at my published books available on Amazon. Also, subscribe to this channel for videos like this one. I appreciate those who support Atlantean Gardens on Patreon as well as those of you who share and click like. Thank you very much. Please leave a comment and have a great weekend. Buffy and I will see you soon.